In this video, I'm going to review 10 of the mistakes that I made when I created my Project 24 slash Income School websites. Let's get started. Hello YouTube, my name is Austin and welcome to this channel. I do a weekly review update on Income School, Project 24 websites, blog sites that I've created. And so basically this is going to be another installment of that. Uh, I wanted to spend some time talking about some of the mistakes that I made and hopefully that you can avoid them. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, these mistakes will probably happen on accident and the best way to learn from the mistakes is just realize that you've made them. And so, like I said, I'm gonna give you 10 of the mistakes that I've made. Feel free to ask questions below, comment below. If you're looking to get started with Project 24, there will be a link in the description, the first link in the description. I definitely urge you to get started with Project 24 because I have learned a lot. Uh, while I have made at least 10 mistakes, I have learned a ton and uh, I've gotten better with content creation, content marketing, and uh, my my channel, my, my, my YouTube channel, uh, my websites are actually starting to blow up. If you wanna know how I'm doing on those sites, check out the previous week's video. Um, I believe this is uh, November 18th. I did like an October 2019 video, check that out. Or if we are in the future, check out the most recent video of that. But as I mentioned, I'm going to review 10 of the mistakes that I've made. If you are a project, current Project 24 member, comment below with one of your mistakes. The best way for you to get better and to grow is to take a critical analytical look at what you've done and how you can improve. So mistake number one, without any further ado, mistake number one, niching down too much. Now, mistake number one and number two are, are kind of... Um, they're, they're kind of contradictory. Uh, mistake number one is niching down too much. Uh, mistake number two is not niching down far enough. Now, when you're first getting started, you don't have a domain authority. So you have to find uh, a sweet spot. You have to go down far enough where you are speaking to a select group of people, but you can't niche down so far that you're talking to 15 people. Uh, 15 people probably aren't going to review your site daily uh, and give you the amount of traffic that you need. So it's very important that you find that happy medium where you are niching down, you're getting out of the way of the larger corporations, the larger brands, but you can also find some success. One thing that you have to realize is the, the success will be slow in the beginning, and that's actually a mistake that I've, I've, um, I have further down on the list, but when it comes to niching down, um, what I would probably do is I would, I would do a very, very thorough investigation on the niche that you're talking about or that you're interested in and go down far enough that you're talking to that 15 people that I mentioned, but then niche back up one or two spots and start creating content there. So that's number one, niching down too much. Uh, mistake number two, and, and I know I'm guilty of this on my first website, is not niching down far enough. If you don't niche down, if you don't niche down far enough, you will struggle at least early on. You will create all of this content. You've spent time, money, possibly energy, uh, frustration away from uh, time away from your friends, family, loved ones, and you won't see as much traction as uh, as you'd hope. And so again, it comes down to a happy medium, kind of finding that sweet spot. And quite honestly, you probably won't know that sweet spot unless you've had experience before, or you you know you kind of stumble into it. So doing a, a thorough um, a, a thorough analysis before you even do keyword research, do a thorough analysis um, just to get an idea of of your topic. Are people looking for the information? How often are they looking for information? Um, so that's all critical and key. The third one, the third mistake that I made was proofreading. Now, uh, to be perfectly honest and, and not to pat myself on the back and to toot my own horn, um, I have a master's degree in, I have an, I have an MBA and um, I, I started, I completed about 50% of a PhD program. And so I kind of just thought, you know, writing is writing, it's fairly easy. But then when I went and looked back over my, some of my earlier blog posts, uh, they weren't uh, it's not that they weren't great quality, it's just that I I was going so fast and I was trying to get all this content up that I was missing simple things like um, putting capital, capital capitalizing some of my headers. Uh, so little things like that are, th are mistakes that can trip you up with regard to search engine optimization. Um, quite honestly, it can actually trip you up with the reader. If the reader is going through and they're reading your content and they're seeing simple proofreading errors, that can be a cause for concern. It can cause other people to click off. And if people are clicking off too soon, they're not clicking through, they're not reading the entire piece of content, you won't make as much money. And quite honestly, you will lose some of that, um, 
that that power, that, that domain authority that you were gaining with Google. So make sure that you spend some time proofreading or else you're gonna find some, some struggles. Number four is keyword research. Now number four and number five uh, are, again, they're, they're tightly bound keyword research and understanding the competition. With keyword research, it's a, it's a funny thing because back in the day, and, and Jim and Ricky, they've talked about this a lot. Back in the day, if, you're, if there was a keyword out there, how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes, you could do that in your title. How to make a million dollars in 10 minutes and you could show up. Nowadays, it's not that cut and dry. And so if even if you find a keyword or topic that that is um, no one's writing for it, you don't see that in your search analysis, how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes, uh, there is there can be someone that's written on a similar topic or content and that can actually rank in the top spot. So it's very important when doing keyword research that you spend some time. Um, the other issue that I ran into with keyword research is I I tried to go too fast. I was in such a hurry to make a million dollars online. Um, and I was in such a hurry to just start creating qu high quality content that I didn't necessarily slow down. It, it, in reality, in my opinion, this is solely my opinion, you should spend at least two or three days on keyword research alone. Because if you get keyword research wrong, it's going to set you back months and even possibly years depending on how long you're you're into this and how deep you get into it but keyword research is very important uh, they recommend and suggest alphabet soup um, i also use i in addition to alphabet soup i use i use answer the public in order to get some ideas and, and to kind of get a, 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 a kind of my wrap my head around what people are searching for um, the interesting thing with answer the public and I made this mistake on my first site if you just use the words from or the, the the keywords from answer answer the public it will help you with Bing Yahoo and DuckDuckGo it won't help you with Google so be aware of that if you are just planning on just using straight um, answer the public it works but it doesn't necessarily work with Google and that results in in some struggles and some frustrations at least early on so keyword research obviously is key I talk a lot about keyword research and how to find keywords. Um, answer the public is good. Uh, Google also suggests, or people also ask. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of a of the first page of the search results, uh, they also have a section there talking about uh, different questions people are asking. So those are really the ways that I would go. If you are looking to get discovered, uh, if you're optimizing your content for Google, which you should be because it's blog and, and Google owns most of the search traffic, you wanna make sure that you stay primarily with Google so that you don't um, get any, and you, you don't, uh, you save yourself some frustration. I'd also paid for um, Ahrefs, quite honestly. What I would do is, and I've done this multiple times, I would buy the $7 seven day thing and download all of the keywords there. That is kind of helpful, but again, it should be more of like a starting point and not an, a finishing or ending point. So uh, again, keyword research is paramount. And then understanding the competition. On my first blog, there is basically, there's one site that writes about every single topic. And so while I've eventually been able to get traction and success by niching down, believe it or not, um, this one company is, is a large company and it's almost as if they've taken and perfected Project 24 because any thought, keyword, idea that you have in this niche, and I, and I don't reveal my niches, um, they have written content on it. And it's not just, you know, it's not just a hundred words. Each one of their, each one of their blog posts is like 5,000 words, even simple, like how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes, even if you're broke and you don't want to use YouTube. Let's say that's a key word. They have written 5,000, 5,000 words on that topic. And so I thought, Hey, I'm just going to go in and write and, and I'll outwrite them or whatever. And I would appear at the top of the research result. And that didn't happen. And so if you ever look at any of my other videos where I talk more extensively about my, um, about my results, that's why, because I went in and I underestimated the power of, of one or two sites. But again, as I mentioned, when I niched down, when I took a step back and, and, and really, um, got in there, um, went to talk to those 15 people, essentially, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I eventually started to find some success. And once you get that success, there's a couple things that you can do. You can keep hammering that success. So again, if I was using that example, how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes, I would just cre keep creating content, how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes on YouTube, how to make a million dollars in 10, in 10 minutes on Reddit. I would just keep hammering that result, or you can uh, try and punch up a weight class 
because you have a little bit of domain authority. So that becomes tricky. Uh, what I would recommend if you were gonna do that, do a little bit of both content mix, do maybe three or five on the how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes on Reddit versus you know how to make a million dollars. Um, so underestimating the competition. Next is picking a seasonal niche. Another thing that I realized, and, and I only realized this um, this month and even back in July when, when Amazon had the Black Friday in July, whatever it's called, is that the first niche that I picked is extremely seasonal. Um, I am making decent money now because we are entering or we're in the holiday season. Um, and that's a whole different topic for a different discussion. There's no way that we should be in Christmas before Thanksgiving. I, I'm starting to get consistent um, purchases from my Amazon associates or, or my Amazon affiliate links because we're in the season. Now that's a problem when when you have a relatively small site if you had a huge site like um i don't know name a top site since you'd be getting traffic all the time it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal but because i i have a relatively small chain a relatively small site i would say about 90 to 100 blog posts in my largest niche um the seasonal is is a big thing for me um, and I, I didn't notice it last year because my content was too new. If you remember, I started my first site, my largest site in September. And so I wasn't really getting any traction in the first few months. So I would have really no idea if it was seasonal or not. But now that we're in the holiday season again, um, traction, uh, I'm starting to make a lot of commissions. Uh, so that's very important, the seasonality. Try and pick something that's not as seasonal. And also too, just to add on to this, is don't pick something that's very niche down to begin with. So the problem that I have is, um, so let's let's look at this at a very top level. Um, let's say my 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 niche is, is in health. And then if I niche down, I'm in yoga. And then I niche down again, I'm in like yoga for the elderly. And the problem with that is, I'm in such a very small section of the market that one company can really consume all of the all of the traffic. And so you want to make sure again when you're understanding the competition and you're picking the seasonality, you want to kind of uh, be aware of how important or or is someone going to be searching for this information in June. Now the problem that I ran into is I was searching for the information in June. I was searching for the information outside of the seasonality of it. So I assume that other people were too. Now, while other people are or have been uh, searching for this information, it wasn't enough um, combined with some of the other factors that I mentioned um, to see a consistent um, consistent traffic and purchases in the off months. Uh, so that is uh, maybe six or seven that picking seasonal niches is very important and not doing it. The, the way that you can figure out if your niche is seasonal or not is you can actually use Google Trends. Google Trends will help you out with the seasonality of it. Also, another thing that you could do to buffer it is pick something that is off season. Pick one thing that's off season, one thing that's on season that can help balance some of that out. Um, the next one is reviewing the analytics every day. When, you're first, when you first get started, or at least when I first got started, I was looking at my analytics and checking out the website basically every day. Um, I was just so excited to have the, um, uh, something online that I could call my own, that I was reviewing it constantly. And the drawback to that is you start pulling your hair out. You're wondering why people aren't coming to your site. You know, you're going to your site all the time and, and you see that it works and, and you might start trying to tweak things before it's necessary. Uh, maybe you're, you feel like your website's not fast enough, so you're tweaking something there. You feel like you don't have enough content, so you're tweaking stuff there. Eventually, you're just doing too much when your website is too new. Now, if your website's been around six months to a year and things aren't improving, then you can start tweaking. But in your first like two, three, four or five months, you're making changes and you don't even know if your changes will be positive or negative. So make sure that you aren't tweaking, um, aren't, aren't checking your analytics every day. And that goes for your Google analytics as well as your Google search console. Uh, don't check those every day because that'll do nothing but, but tear your hair out. It'll, it'll drive you mad. The next one, and this is a big one, comparing yourself to others. What will happen, and this is, and, and this just happens on the internet, you'll see two types of people. You'll see the people that are doing very well, and you'll see the people that are failing or struggling. You don't really see the pretty people that are in the middle. Those people may be embarrassed. Uh, they may feel like they have nothing to brag about. Quite honestly, I'm the outlier because I, I'm not doing great and I'm not struggling. I'm not failing. I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to income school. 
And so you want to make sure that you, you're not comparing yourself to others, especially for a number of reasons. You don't know uh, how many websites they've built before. You don't know the content that they're using. You don't know their niche. You, you don't, there's so many variables that go into it that comparing yourself to others is 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 a fruitless experiment just make sure that you are getting better every day you want to just make sure that you're getting better every day improving every day um and that's really the the, the mantra that i i i follow when i go after um every day you've got to get better or else you someone else that's behind you is getting better and you're getting worse uh you're, you're never staying the same you're either getting better or you're getting worse uh, and that's the that's the mantra that i follow uh so after that comparing yourself to others realize that it's not too late and this is interesting. Um, this realizing that it's not too late can mean a few different things. It's not too late to start a blog. It's not too late to start YouTube videos. Um, it's not too late to start a podcast. And it's not too late to turn things around. I think people get into this mode or this frustration that if if your website or your blog isn't working after six months, they want to just blow it up. They want to maybe delete everything, or they want to sell it or close it down or whatever. Uh, but it's not too late. You just it really only takes one or two quality post, you only need to get it right once or twice and you can get tons of traffic. Now, once you get it right once or twice, you just need to continuously build on that. This, this channel is actually a very good example of that. If you look at my channel overall, there aren't, uh, I, I'm not getting thousands of views on, on all of my videos. Some of my videos are doing very well relative to my subscriber count and some aren't. And so you just need to get it right a couple times for your uh, blog to explode or your podcast to explode, whatever it is. And so um, you just need to kind of check your ego at the door and realize, hey, it's, it's not too late for me to go back and start over and, and just continue to get better and to progress. Uh, and so the last one, um, and this is key, is trying different teachings on the site. Now there's income school theory of doing things, which is like 60 steps or 30 blog posts, whatever. Then there's like the KGR where you're finding long tail keywords and you're doing a mathematical equation. Uh, there's, you know, there's Neil Patel. There's just so many different theories out there. I recommend that you pick a theory, pick a, a, a course and just stick with it. Stick with it until you are successful or, or, or until you fail. I know one of the issues that I ran into is when I was frustrated is I started looking at the KGR method. I started looking at some or some of the other methods out there instead of looking at what I had not done correctly or, or some of the mistakes that I'd made on my current uh, blog post that I could improve and, and make better. So that's actually very, very important is pick pick a lane and stay in it. Stay in your lane, as, as they say. Um, and that will help you one way or another. And one other thing I'm gonna throw in here, a, a bonus tip is define your success. What I think you should do is pick a day, let's say a year from now, or a year from whenever you started your site and say, I wanna have this many th this many people, this many visitors per day, and that's how I know I was successful. Uh, don't necessarily go off of what anyone else is telling you because every there, everything is different. There's so many different variables. Uh, how many times you write per day, if you're writing every day, if you're writing every other day, if you're a slow writer, um, if you're hiring writers, there's just a lot of variables. Uh, go in it, create a realistic, plan of action and say, hey, in a year from now, I wanna get a thousand page views a day. And if you don't meet that, then that's when you can decide to try something else or or to try a different uh, teachings or, or um, method to creating content. But, but I would recommend that you don't just go three months and say, okay, this didn't work, let me try something else. Because again, you don't really know that if it, if it did or didn't work. If you are looking to get started with Project 24 Income School, there's a link in the description. It is affiliate link, so if you click on it, I can and do receive a little bit of commission. Um, I would certainly appreciate it if you felt this content was helpful. Um, also, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Before I forget, I do want to inform you that some of the links that you will see in your description are affiliate links and I do and can receive a commission if you click on those links and purchase a product.